Welcome to our lecture online. Now we've seen a lot of operations with vectors, including the del operator, we've seen the gradient, the diversions, the curl, and to keep it all straight, and, and also the combination of all those things. So to keep it all straight, we've kind of summarized all the possible operations we could be encountering and that we should be familiar with. At least you can reference this and say, oh yes, that's what that is, and that's what we end up with, because sometimes it's important to realize if the operation results in a scalar or a vector quantity, or even a, an operator. And then in the next video, we're going to show you examples. Maybe we need two videos, it's a lot of examples here. We may need two more videos to show you examples of each of those so that you can kind of, again, summarize it and familiarize yourself with the various operations. So first we have a product, oh, and by the way, notice I have a, an example of a function. We have an example, this is a function in x and y. Here we have a vector a, we have a vector b, just examples that we're going to use afterwards in the next video. But first we have a product between the function and the del operator. So the function is a scalar quantity and we're multiplying it times a vector operator and the result is that you still end up with a vector operator. We typically will then operate on something else presumably a vector, it could be a scalar, presumably a vector, but at least it's simply the product of a scalar and a vector operator, which then typically gets used again. The second one is what we call the gradient of a function. The gradient will result in a vector. It will point in the direction of the largest change in that function. So that's what we mean by the gradient. The dot product is simply a multiplied times b via the dot product, and that ends up in a scalar quantity. We simply multiply the x components, the y components, and the z components together, add them together, we don't end up with a vector. But if we do a cross product, a cross b, then we end up with a vector quantity. Then we have what we call the divergence. The divergence, which is the del operator operating on a vector, that gives us a scalar quantity. And if we use the del operator to multiply via the, the cross product symbol, that, called, that is called the curl, and then we end up with a vector quantity. And then we have the product between a vector and the del operator via the dot product. So we have a scalar multiplied times a, par, times a partial derivative operator, and so that's what we end up with. We still end up with an operator that can then operate on something else. Or we have the b vector multiplied times the divergence of a. Now the divergence gives you a scalar, and here's a vector. When you multiply, you end up with a vector quantity. Here we have the vector a multiplied times the del operator. We saw some examples of that in the previous couple of videos. When we did that, we end up with a scalar quantity. Then when you multiply a scalar times a vector, you end up with a vector quantity. It's simply a vector multiplied by the scalar. And here we can re reverse the order. We can have b dot the del operator. Again, this gives us a scalar quantity. Multi multiply times a vector ends up in a vector quantity. Again, it's not a bad idea to memorize this to some extent because whenever you end up with looking at that, you don't always have to go back and try to remember what that was equal to. You just kind of look at it and go, oh yes, I remember what that was. That's a scalar, that's a vector. It helps a lot if we do that. So those, this is a pretty good summary of all the various operations we can have with vectors, with scalars, and with the del operator. And that is the list.